Director X, welcome to Q. Hey, thanks for having me. Nice to see you again. Yeah, man. Did you watch Superfly when you were younger? No, no, I didn't. I just, but I've been saying this for a lot of interviews, but uh, I had not seen the movie, but I knew that Superfly was about a drug dealer who wanted to make a million dollars and get out the game. Yeah. And that's a lot to know about a movie from 72 that you've never seen before. Right. You know so I mean? it, it had lore. You knew something about it. It's in the zeitgeist. I don't even remember. It's not like I remember. Then my guy told me. I don't know where I got that yeah. information. But I knew what that movie was like, very specifically knew what it was about. Same here. And when I saw the remake, when I saw the poster for the remake, I was like, oh, cool. The remake in Superfly. I had never seen it, yeah. but it was cool. Yeah. It's, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Right, it's yeah. a cool movie to, to, to remake. Yeah. When did you finally watch it or did you? Um, I watched it after I got the first script. Um, they sent me a script and I read it and I knew it wasn't Superfly. I'm like, okay, I haven't seen Superfly, but this ain't Superfly. It, they had taken King Lear and had rewritten. It's a big Hollywood like crazy story, 20 year story. They went and got the rights and then they made a deal with a studio and they're going to make the movie. But the studio said, okay, I know we're going to, we bought the rights to Superfly. We're going to remake Superfly, except we don't want to call it Superfly and we don't want it to be about anything that the original movie was about. Right. That makes sense to me. Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, they took King Lear and, and wrote this uh, kind of like Hood King Lear then they lost the rights then they got the rights back and they put it back on that script and they sent me that script Right. so I'm reading it and it's King Lear which is you know um, this this drug kingpin breaking I'm quitting and here's my empire I've split it into two and you mm -hmm. kids and Priest is one of the kids and he wants to expand and he wants to get deeper in the drug game Right. so I'm, as I'm reading I go this ain't Superfly. No. no. Superfly's what, about a guy getting out. Out. Yeah. His was about a guy getting deeper in. So I said to them, look, if I'm going to do this, I want to do Superfly. Um, that's what people are going to expect to see. That's what I would want to see. I don't want to do a bamboozle. I want to do Superfly. And they said, yeah, let's do it. Right. And that's when I went and really looked at the original movie again and started breaking it down, like when we got into the real process of what makes Superfly Superfly. Well, it's shot by shot in the beginning of the film, right? Is, 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 isn't, isn't there a scene at the <clears> beginning <throat> of your Superfly which is shot by shot, the original Superfly? It's beat for beat. It's not shot for shot, but beat for beat. So when uh, f when Priest decides he's going to, he goes to his partner. Priest is the lead character. Priest is the lead character, right. and, his, and his partner is Eddie. Yep. And he goes to Eddie, uh, he goes to pick up Eddie, and Eddie's gambling. And as he's gambling, Priest walks in, he watches Eddie, Eddie's winning, he steps up to Eddie, says, there's a guy at the table, a big guy at the table talking. Yeah. So uh, Priest says, come on, let's go talk. Eddie leaves, the big guy gets upset because he, he's leaving with the money, he wants a chance to win the money back, he insults Priest, Priest hits him. Yeah. And if you take our scene from the movie and you take the scene from the original movie, it is beat for beat Yeah. the the same scene. Is that fun for you to do something like that? Yeah. I mean, look, it was, for me, it was... So you're us, like an original guy to me. Like, you're, an, yeah. you know, that's who you are to me. But, I mean, I'm an original guy, but also I'm a big nerd. Right? Yeah. And so, <laughs> I've, I, you know, remember the dark days of comic book movies where yeah. you're like, hey, you know that character you love? Yeah, we're changing him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about hating him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till we're done. So you, know, you go see these movies, and you're like, why are you changing things? What? No one asked for your opinion on Deadpool. We want Deadpool, yeah, right? right? And you can see now, and that's actually have pictures of Deadpool in the pitch package as we're pitching this new version of the movie, that um, in the comic book world, by staying true to it, you have... Christopher Nolan, Batman, you have Adam West, Batman. Mm -hmm. And to the Batman fans, they're both Batman. It's not like one doesn't count. Yeah. But they're for their era, they were Batmans. Yeah. But they always stuck, you know, it's Bruce Wayne, Mansion, fights crime, here's the characters. And then from there, you can evolve it so it works now. So mm -hmm. that was our thought process here, that we're going to keep the core of it. We're really going to respect the source material and then... Um, the changes that we make are changes of, um, you could say, necessity to meet the times. Well, one, one of those changes was the original Superfly set in the 70s in Harlem in, yeah. in New York. This is set in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Why Atlanta? Um, Atlanta is really the Harlem of today, right? You have a big hot record locally in Atlanta. You have a hit record worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even BMF, I don't know if you know these, this name, BMF was a big drug dealing crew, and they were world famous, you know, BMF. Everyone knew about them. They were, had these songs. Mm -hmm. Everyone knew who BMF was. It, it was worldwide in the same way that in Harlem, if you were, if you had a big song in Harlem, you had a big song around the world. Right. And even their drug dealers, Nicky Barnes in the 70s, was on the cover of magazines. These were famous people. This famous, you yeah. know, cover of magazines, posing for pictures as being a, a drug dealer yeah, in yeah, the yeah. city. <laughs> right. So um, 
for today, Atlanta has that sway. It's that city. We had um, uh, Brian Tyree Henry. He plays uh, Alfred Paperboy on mm-hmm. the show Atlanta. Yeah. Have you seen the show Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. It, it's great. Uh, and he, I asked him about, like, you know, how does it feel to be in the show about Atlanta? And he said, to be honest, Tom, he said, the critics mean something to me, sure. Like, the fans of the show mean something to me or other. But if I don't get this right for the people of Atlanta, mm-hmm. they're going to be my harshest critic. Exactly. Did, you, did you feel that? Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's a part of what Big Bank uh, does. One of the, the Big Bank Black... He's Q. He plays Q. Oh, yeah. The yeah. leader of Snow Patrol. Yeah. That's a real authentic. Um, he's a tough guy. <laughs> he's a tough guy. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. a real deal Atlanta dude. Like 21 Savage, actually, uh, he he read at the table read, he read Juju. He read the part of Juju. Mm-hmm. And we hadn't locked in our Q as yet. And it, it was him. It was 21 Savage said, you need to go talk to Big Bank. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the guy. So did you were you running things past him going like, hey, man, is this true to Atlanta? Is this... Um, to a degree, like you know, there's there's some stuff we know from the culture. I've been going to Atlanta a long time, and just everyone knows yeah. it a bit. But we might go to him and say, you know, he flipped so many lines. A lot of the things that happen, like what? Can you, can you get an example of something he might have said? Like, no, this is how we really do it. Um, there's a, there's a scene. Well, not so much how much we really do it, but Bank is just hilarious, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, we're shooting the nightclub scene, and all the Snow Patrol guys were all white, and he goes, "We look like a big bowl of rice." Yeah. And then uh, we said, "Oh." Priest, you're going to say that. Yeah, you, <laughs> you took, look like a big bowl of rice. Yeah, y'all look like a big bowl of rice up here. So <laughs> jokes like that. And then just certain ad libs. A lot of the stuff when he's uh, yelling at Juju, uh, that's him just ad libbing. You know what I mean? We, we really gave space for my actors. Like that Rick Ross scene, um, that argument that happens in that scene was not scripted. Oh, really? No. You just said, hey, you two. No, no, no. One of the actors, the guy who plays Freddie. We're shooting the scene, and then he says, we don't need these mother effers. And then everyone else in the scene reacted, and it all just went crazy. And, like, it was like, what the? Yo, that was kind of good, though. We need to keep going. <laughs> they, were just, they were just improvising. They were just. He says, we don't need these mother effers, and everyone else jumped up, and they all started arguing. They just went yeah. with the scene and where they took it, and it was good. So we decided, all right, we're going to do this now. So now with that, we got to. It just it all changed immediately at that place. I appreciate how radio friendly you're being, by the way. Yeah, I mother mean, effers. It's really kind of you. Well, you're welcome. You're, you're saving. Welcome. You're saving our friend Ty uh, a uh, an edit session later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the bleep button. Yeah. Uh, if you, and, if my, you, and my son's in the booth over there, so you know that might do it too. That might do it too. Yeah. Uh, a huge part of the success of the original Superfly film, I think the reason I knew. I think the reason I knew about Superfly was because of Curtis Mayfield. Yeah. Was because of the soundtrack. Like, mm. I, I would even say in many ways the soundtrack has lived a longer life or Completely. at least a different life than the, than the original It extends the life of the film. So you collaborated with Future mm. uh, for your version of Superfly. Just take a listen to some of this. That's Future with the Pride of Mississauga Party Next Door. Yes. From the Superfly soundtrack, Director X in studio with me right now. Aside Future, of course, being from Atlanta, what made him, how do I put this, like the Curtis Mayfield of this record, of this of this uh, movie? He, yeah, you know, he's from Atlanta. He understands the culture. He's one of the forefronts of the sound of that city. And also this, you know, big worldwide famous, you know, at one point I was, we are like, we need someone who's we could put their face on the poster. You know, the original poster has a little square of Curtis May- of Curtis Mayfield, music by Curtis Mayfield. Right, it was as much, yeah, because Curtis was as much a part of the marketing of Superfly as, as, the, yeah, as the lead Yeah, they actor, literally yeah. had a little picture of him on the, on the poster. That's so cool. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> we need an artist of that level that if we wanted to, we could do that. So how do you pitch it to him? We were doing a Gap commercial with Cher and Future. I don't remember, remember seeing this commercial. Cher so. and Future do a commercial together. They, they sing Everyday People together. Yeah, I know Gap what you're talking about. Yes, yeah, I right. directed that commercial. Right. So we're there, and I'm looking at everybody and kind of have this project on the burner and kind of like, hmm, I wonder if Cher would want to do this. So... <laughs> <laughs> you had me for a second. Yeah. You really did. I was like, yeah. she, she said, she said no. Cher said no. Oh, I guess future. Yeah, we, we couldn't get Nana Muscuri, so we got future. <laughs> so, oh, <my. laughs> 
They were right beside each other. I directly yeah. turned to Future yeah. after she said no. Yeah. I said, what's up? How about up? you? And he went, oh, yeah, yeah, I sure, guess, yeah, sure, yeah, I yeah, guess. Sure, yeah. um, but he was into it? Yeah, completely. The moment yeah. the moment we talked about it, he really, ideas started kicking. He really just kind of got warmed up about it, so. so how, how much, like, Future, one of the most important trap artists of our time. Completely. How important was trap to the story you were trying to tell here? Um, I mean, it's the culture of the city. It's the sound. We had to be current. Again, Curtis Mayfield was current to his sound. Right. And when we were, we're when we broke down, what are the elements that make Superfly? One of the, you know, hair, car, story, music. All right, well, the music, what makes it, what is it about the music? It's not just the songs. It was the fact that Curtis Mayfield, he described himself as the Greek choir. To the, you know, this commentary on what's going on in yeah, the Yeah, the film. chorus, right. Exactly. Yeah, right, yeah. And so... Uh, the Greek chorus, as yeah. So well, the choir, uh, I know, I know what you mean yeah, by yeah. that. Like the chorus and opera. Exactly. Like, so they, here's what's going on. Here's what's happening. Yeah. So we needed that here. I wanted a singular artistic vision with that same to save the same purpose, as opposed to taking the soundtrack and losing ourselves and remaking records and competing with what was done. You're never touching that. You're never coming close. It's mm -hmm. One of the greatest albums ever made. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no need to. You know, to, and, and you have it in there. Like yeah, yeah. We 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 touch on it because there's some homages paid. You know, we use some of those records because, I, you know, honestly, I didn't want to use it. You didn't not, want to use Mayfield? Not that I don't like the record, but I wanted it to be today. Yeah. And um, But we had it as a placeholder till we found the right record. And, I, you know, we're all arguing and everyone's like, hey, it's a good record. I go, of course it's a good record. It's one of the best records ever made. The mm -hmm. question isn't if it's good. It's, you know, can we find something that can – And if, but if it can't, mm -hmm. then we'll go with this. But I was hoping someone would – but this is – when you listen to that music, you listen to the, the, the instrumentality, the, just the layers that is happening. This is not stuff that happens in modern, especially modern hip hop, let alone modern music. This but is big stuff. You're going to have people that <clears throat> watch, like young, I mean, a lot of young people are going <clears> to <throat> watch this who won't know the original film, who won't know Curtis Mayfield, won't right. know Pusher Man. Mm -hmm. It does work. Like, I, I, I had this moment where I was thinking, man, someone's about to hear him sing Pusher Man for the first time. Yeah. And that's what a beautiful moment that is for me. Completely. Yeah. And, when, and those lyrics, and I mean, that's. Such a ballsy song, especially he made that in the seventies. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm your mama, I'm your daddy, I'm that nigga in the alley. I'm the I'm like what? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this like is... I could, I, he put that on a major label in like <laughs> yeah. in the seventy. What year was that? Like yeah, I'm your pusher. This is a big this is big big stuff for yeah. its day, and it's like I said, it it still holds. Uh, if you're just tuning in, I'm talking with Director X about the new Superfly remake, how Cher turned him down. The film hits theaters. <laughs> <laughs> the film hits theaters June 13th. Take a listen to this. Everybody who's been at the top of the game being down, right? They end up dead or in jail almost always because of their ego, wanting more than they should want. Everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to be super fly. They want to be us. If you dance with the devil long enough, he's bound to step on your feet. A moment from the new film, Superfly, directed by my guest, Director X. A bit of an exchange between the film's protagonist, Youngblood Priest, played by Trevor Jackson, his partner, Eddie, played by Jason Mitchell. X, what makes a Priest tick? Um, priest is one of those guys. So Priest is, you know, on to the next challenge, tackles them. He's also very lucky. He's one of those people who shine bright. You know, there's just people who walk in a room and they shine brightly. He Priest is a person like that. And also a lucky guy. The universe likes him. People like him. Yeah. People want to help him out. Powerful people want to help him out. Girls like him. Mm -hmm. He's just one of these. He's super fly. He's super fly. Mm -hmm. He's born to it. He can't help it, right? Um, you know, for the, all the characters, especially all my major characters, I actually gave everybody detailed personality profiles of who they were. Like They're, you gave the actors? I gave the actors their personality. They're, I have, they have these ways, these mysterious ways in which I can give them very detailed personality can, profiles. Can you give me a hint, even though it's mysterious? Um, and numerology. So, brother, I'm a magical, mystical type of dude. I love what you said earlier. I mean, you believe, I'm original, but I'm a nerd. <laughs> I'm original, I'm a nerd. So I've, I've found damn near cultish level uh, numerology people that give really interesting readings. Really? So, oh, yes, it's very interesting. <laughs> so, so, they, so they give readings to a fictional, like, fictional character They readings? go by the name. <clears throat> wow. Right. So I, I put in the name, and, and it just so happened that the names really lined, when I said, oh, let's give this a shot, but it completely lined up with what was going on. So I, I gave them this whole thing. And then uh, outside of that, I, you know, so I give you, I, we had their, I had their name, personality, I had their karma, like what, yeah. what's your luck in life? And then I just went and uh, found, you know, Myers Briggs? No. Myers Briggs is a, like an academic personality test. If you can look up Myers Briggs, you can do the. Now you can do it online. It's like an results. IQ test. Or it's kind of like a bunch of academics. So, uh, I'm an ENTJ. Well, I am. A I've IS heard of this. I've heard of yeah, this. Yeah, so, with the letters. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So it's it's that. It's how smart I am. I say stuff like with the letters, right? Yeah, yeah the letters thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So I went and gave everybody a personality 
a Myers Briggs personality and even how they get angry. How does this how does this character I'm really digging deep on the internet and I found a page that would say how how does a Myers Briggs, how did each personality get upset? Right. And that was actually easier for me to say because I could imagine, you know, when you, you imagine making a fictional character, one of the easier things, well, if this person got angry, what would they do? Are yeah. they a live wire? Are they calm and calculated? What type of person? So from that, I was able to kind of reverse engineer this really big file that everyone got that said, this is who your character is. Where, where did you get this idea? What made you want to? I've never I, heard of this. I before. mean, I'm a nerd, bro. This, yeah. is, this is what nerd, nerds, nerds, nerd. Well, t- well, tell me your motivation behind it. Like, outside of uh, nerds, nerd, what, want, what, what does I this want, do for a character? I, I, I didn't want everyone. Sometimes you can come across a script and they'll say the, the test of good writing is that when you can tell, if you were to take off names and just read the dialogue and be able to tell who's who, by the words they say. Like if you go into Star Wars, you 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 don't need it you don't need someone to say this is Han speaking. Yeah, you yeah. can tell Han, Luke, and Obi-Wan and Leia. They're all very distinct in the way they talk, what they do, and yeah. all that. So I wanted to bring something like that to um, my actors that really said, You're not just playing yourself or doing this is who you are. When you get ang- like when Eddie gets angry, Eddie might hit you. When Priest gets angry, he won't say anything. He'll observe, and then when he makes his move, one big move, he's taking it all. He solves it all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is his personality type. How do the actors uh, react to that? I mean, are they... I guess this isn't a situation they find themselves. Typically, they show up on, you know, they have mm-hmm. a little conversation with the director about who the character is. They don't have to read binders of... of <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean? You have homework. Yeah. yeah. Um, they appreciate it. Look, you want to know who these characters are. It's, you know, the difference with film versus, say, television, you live with the character. You walk on set as a director, and these guys have been doing... My character wouldn't do this. My character wouldn't do that. And they have the, the time and experience with the writers and themselves to, to know, really, the character. Where feature films, you're you're jumping into this person for a moment, and sometimes you have these moments on set like this isn't ringing. I know we wrote it, but this doesn't seem right now that we're doing it. This doesn't seem like it's what this character would do, and you'd have to figure it out and find what works right. right. So I want to give uh, some ammunition. I wanted to give a real good foundation for everybody to have something to say about what their character would do. So if I say, would the say Georgia at the strip club? Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, hey, throw money. The script they say she wrote, throw money. And we're like, this doesn't, she doesn't throw money. No. Of course, and look at, look, at the, look at the binder here. Look at the <laughs> look, No, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, look, at her, look at who she is. <clears throat> yeah. we, we, you can make decisions about the character's intention about something deeper than just the script. Exactly, exactly. That's fascinating. If you're just tuning in, I'm, I'm speaking with Director X. Uh, we're talking about his remake of the 1974 film Super Pl- Superfly. The remake is a, a bit of a loose term. Super, Superply. Superply is all about toilet paper. It does, <laughs> it does really well. The original Superfly is considered a, a key film in the, and it comes up all the time with the black exploitation yes. era of cinema in the 1970s. I want to reflect on that era for a while. Um, what do you think the most important thing that the black exploitation era brought to modern cinema? Do you see any of it? Um, black exploitation. A lot of the black exploitation stuff is a chance for a community to at least lash out, or at least imagine that they're on top. Imagine that they they get the upper hand on a system that's constantly putting a, a boot on their neck, right? Uh, for Superfly, it was within the context of the world of crime, but even still, the system. In the original Superfly, you know, he, these dirty cops show up and they yeah. want his money and they want them to work. He wants to leave drug dealing. And they're like, oh, no, 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 you're going to work for us. Right. You're going to keep on selling those drugs. And, you know, and he fights the system and beats the system. There's a bunch of other ones. The evil developer moves in. And like all these movies, he, from the ones that dealt with characters as criminals or dealt with them as just kind of superhero kind of good citizens, yeah. you know, Shaft is a private eye. You always had this element where... The person watching got to at least in this two hours and one this hour and a half, they got to get some justice. They, they got to feel like there's some justice uh, dished out, even if it's in a fantasy. At least it feels good to imagine it mm-hmm. and have someone put that in front of you. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely took that to a, a, a real extreme. I wouldn't even say an extreme, but that certainly a modern way. Yes. With the... Um depiction of the white police officers you know shooting him shooting uh, one of the characters the black characters in, in a car i mean that was that's a little bit of that's a little bit of social critique there in it is as well, well when uh, when we took the original we really broke it down we said mm-hmm. okay we're going to do we're going to be true to our source material who are the characters they're all in the movie what happened to these characters what are the, what are their storylines individually where that's in the movie and once we had touched on those things then we got then we had a freedom to start taking things places because it, all those choices came from 
an adherence and a reverence of what the original script was. So there's some things that had to change just because it didn't work from well, 1972 to 2018. It's a long time away. It's yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. And then there's some stuff that is just, it's essentially the same. A lot the way that scene is beat for beat the same. The, you know, um, in the original, Freddy uh, gets arrested by the cops because mm-hmm. he's beating someone up over his woman. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the cops, you know, take him into a room and they grill him and he ends up dying in police custody. Mm-hmm. So we said, all right, these are the almost like little beats. We got to hit these beats. How we get them doesn't have to be the same, but we need to touch on those. And um, I mean, spoiler alert, there's a song called Freddy's Dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, so, you know, um, yeah, I mean, like it's hard to talk about it without. Sure, I understand. Yeah, I don't yeah. want yeah, to spoil, but like I said, you know, there's a, there's not a, there's not that much of a spoiler. There's a song called "Freddy's Dead" on the soundtrack of the original. And um, we were doing some research for this, and we found out that the term "black exploitation," which is always a term that I had at least heard growing up, as a very positive term. Yeah. I found it. It came from the NAACP uh, as a criticism of films like Superfly. I didn't know that they, they saw it as glorifying the imagery and storylines around pimp and drug culture. How do yeah. you feel about that? But was that warranted back then? Um, look. Uh, We've always been, especially when you're a community that has things, you know, when you get into, say, The Godfather, there's Italians that jump up, hey, 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 you don't, we don't need these movies about Italians and gangsters, because yeah. there's some perception of that, and yeah. then you're making a movie and you're bolstering the perception. So, yeah, I understand the criticism, but then there's also the reality that there are Italian, the best, there is a mafia, and there are drug dealers. But These I mean, things exist. That, that was then, is it something that crossed your mind now for this film? Yeah, look, more so for me, I wasn't as much concerned about um, saying, oh, they're drug dealers, therefore they are bad, and this is something. It wasn't that. Um, my concern was making a movie that a kid would watch and feel like, oh, I'm not rough enough in my neighborhood. Tell them to step up my gangster. I understand. You know what I'm saying? So for us, the way I dealt with that, is by that movie you you saw the movie yeah. we're not in the hood no the, the, the one uh, we're in the hood once and he that's him going home for a second and then he leaves yeah. there's there's nothing i didn't want to make a movie that a young kid would watch and say that looks like my life yeah that looks like the world i live in and then the subconscious uh message being step it up kid you're not you're not you know so we we made this much more this is way more fast and furious than it is sicario one of the <clears throat> now that you mentioned that, this just occurred to me that one of the prevailing themes in the film, and I don't think this is giving anything away, and you can mm. tell me to, to shut up if, you, if, you, if, I'm, spoiler if, if I'm giving too much spoiler yeah. alert, is that, he's well, A, he's trying to get out, which mm. is something we miss entirely. We, mm. we, sorry, we can miss entirely when we think about Superfly. Yes. This is a cool guy, explosions exactly. and, and guns, but he's trying to get out. Yes. He's trying to stop this. And he says something very early. He says, it doesn't matter how smart you are. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how cool you are. It doesn't matter how brilliant, how slick you are, how Superfly you are. Mm. One bullet can do it for you. Yeah. One turn, yeah, and that was essentially it. And that again from the original. In the original, he gets attacked by junkies, and um, he, you know, they, steal, they he gets attacked. They steal his money. He chases him down. And it's the beginning of you know uh, enough of this. Uh, when making this version, I it just didn't feel believable that a big time drug dealer making millions of dollars is anywhere a junkie could get at him. But we said, all right, well, if it's not junkies, what is it? And then we said, oh, well, what if it's rival drug dealers? Right, right, because so, it's still. People in the drug game mm-hmm. is a life he chose in that world that he decided to be in is kind of collided with him. So we, we did that, and that felt more believable. And then from there, we were able to grow those characters. There's not just a drug dealer. It's a big old crew of them. And it's, you know, now he's in hot water. So, he's, he, he, the, again, the life he's chose is beginning to, um, you know, come in, well, the walls are moving in, we could say. Yeah, but he's smart enough to know he has to get out. He's smart enough to know he has to get out. It, uh, X, it's been great talking to you. You too, bro. I've I, I wanted to talk to you for a really long time. I've been a fan of your work for a while. Thank you. Um, obviously, people know you very well from, from directing music videos, mm-hmm. you know, like Hotline Bling, and, and yeah, these were huge videos for a lot of different people. Yeah. How are you feeling with the big feature film about to come out? I feel great. I mean, look, it's, it's, a, it's a great journey as a filmmaker. Does it feel different? Um, to a degree. It's just such a longer process and, you know, at some point, it's coming out, and there will be box office and numbers and critics. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. in every major paper, there will be someone saying, your movie sucked, or your yeah. movie was great. Knock on wood. That doesn't happen a lot in music videos. It's, you know, views yeah, and, yeah, you get something, maybe it pops, or but there's, it's not a dedicated industry of music video critics. Yeah, there's a, there's a meme of Drake with a <clears throat> tennis racket, but that's about all you're going to get. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And, you know, you know, I got want to talk about... Um, 
a show on Viceland, Mr. Tachyon. I have a, I created a show for Viceland. What is and, it? Uh, it's called Mr. Tachyon. They've actually aired uh, the episodes in Canada, but for the rest of the world, it'll be it premiering July 11th at 11.30. What's it about? Mr. Tachyon is a docu-series, and it's about, it's where it's a science experiment show, but the host is a fictional character I created. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Tachyon is the son of the Invisible Man. His father was a scientist that turned himself invisible. He was born invisible, and he wears a, like a black outfit and whatever, you know, and he's an analogy for science, basically. He's invisible. He's not there. And, we're, and we go and do experiments on fringe science. So, you know, we do uh, energy healing. We do an episode on energy healing. We right. do an episode on mind over matter. We do, like, all these you know, telepathy, uh-huh. but we do real science on these out there ideas and then let the results speak for themselves. So, um, yeah, that's uh, coming July 11th. Actually, I want to tell you this, like, and I mean, take this with the, yes. the take this with the respect I, I mean, because know that I have yeah, tremendous respect for you. I think you're one of the coolest people in the entire world. In fact, I think you're, like, well-known as one of the coolest creative people mm. in the world. I had no idea what a nerd you were. The, 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 the level is high, brother. <laughs> I tell you, I can, I can debate the carbon crystal on a lightsaber and then jump right over to the physics of your light speed travel being off. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> you, can have a, like, you would not reach that solar system in that amount of time. You, you, know can, you can have a an issue with the DeLorean and then shoot a video with the DeLorean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they could do it all. Yeah, and I've done one with the DeLorean, by the way. Which one? Uh, O'Neill McKnight, Check Your Coat. Let's talk about a little fun project. A good friend of mine, O'Neill. What's a DeLorean like? Uh, incredible. Were you in it? And, yeah. Doc, and Doc is in it. What? You gotta look this video up, bro. <laughs> like Doc, Doc is like Christopher. Yes, it's called Check uh, tri- uh, Christopher, not Walken, but. Um, what's his name? Christopher what? Who plays Doc in what? Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, he's in the movie. He's in the, in the video. Uh, <laughs> Did you get to go into DeLorean? DeLorean. He goes into DeLorean. He goes to the future. It's a whole thing, bro. Would you go to the future or would you go to the fu- would you go to the past? Um, look, black folks have a, a limit on their time travel. <laughs> 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 There's certain like yeah, right, 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 after right, yeah. before the seventies is kind of <laughs> uh, anything before the seventies is shaky. You know what I'm saying? So future. You with me? You see what I'm saying? So you're, you're, you're taking the almanac to the future. Yeah, I'm going. That. I'm going future, bro. I'm going future. Director X, thanks for coming in. Thank you, bro.